Hello and welcome to I Am Organic Gardening. My name is Mark and this is my beautiful farm which is fully organic located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey and my large kitchen garden. And today I'd like to share with you all that you need to know about squash flowers. That includes your spaghetti squash, your butternut squash, your famous yellow squash, zucchini, any type of squash you have, this pertains to all those flowers. The first thing I'd like to show you is how to identify the female flower from the male flower. Now here's a great selection of flowers that we have here. Now the first one in the middle of your screen is a female flower. That is the one that bears fruit right here. You can see the beginning of a yellow squash. And I'll show you right now what it looks like when they're just first forming. Now these are just forming. They're about an inch long. These are going to be female flowers because you can see right now that you're going to have your yellow squash forming right below the flower. Now you can definitely tell the difference between this female flower and the male flower, which is this group right here. You can identify it very easily by because there's no fruit performing on the bottom of each one and it's just the male flower. Now let's go over how do we hand pollinate these flowers if you wish to grow them underneath insect netting to have a pest free environment. I'm asked this question a lot over the years. How can I grow squash? I'm always getting invaded by uh, squash bugs and vine borers. You can grow uh, your uh, squash and zucchini underneath insect netting that's very fine and it will give a sterile environment but you have to go in there now and then hand pollinate each of those female flowers so if you have the time and the effort and the money to buy all that equipment it is possible and you will receive this best fruit that you can possibly have using this method so let's first pick our male flower here, that's off in the corner, this one. It hasn't opened up yet, you should do this early in the morning. So let's just snap this off so I can show you better. Now, this one's almost ready to be done. It should open up, but you do not wish to have bees. A lot of people will close this off with a clothes pin to hold in the pollen, but let's open it up. And what you're gonna do is just peel this back slowly here because I don't want to ruin you can see inside there we go now this is the male flower again no fruit forming on the bottom and now we have that beautiful pollen waiting for us to and this is almost like a paintbrush to introduce into the female flower itself so let's find a female flower so we have one tucked away down in here. I really can't get a good camera shot, but I'm gonna remove it and we're just gonna snap this off. There we go. Now, again, female flower has a fruit forming on the bottom. And now let's look inside. And that's what it looks like. That's the female flower right there. Now I'm just gonna peel this out of the way so you can see a better way of pollinating it. Now you're just going to take this and just gently rub it on the top here like a paintbrush and there you go. You have pollinated that flower, be successful, and that's this will continue to grow. Now also this is a very critical point in your uh, squash development no matter what you have here. The reason why because if this is not successfully pollinated this tip will turn brown and start dying off. You'll even get a deformity where this is not straight anymore depending on the type of squash or zucchini you have and this will start turning brown. That's just due to lack of good pollination. It doesn't mean you're not having bees in the area as much. It might be too rainy or the pollen has been removed by other insects and is not brought over. But there's plenty of male flowers and it will do fine. But again, if this tip turns brown later on don't worry about it it's nothing wrong with the plant it's just basically did not get pollinated correctly now here we have a developed fruit already that's doing very nicely so I want to show you inside the flower so you know what it looks like when it gets pollinated it will change a different color and you can identify before it closes up that you did a good job and you'll produce fruit and it will continue to grow so let's look inside here I'll remove this if we can nice and easily This part right here in the middle, you will see will turn 
brown. Let me break this off. And that's where the pollen has successfully pollinated that flower. It will turn brown. So you know you have a good pollinated flower before that fruit starts growing. And this will do uh, within maybe say four or five days after you pollinated it by hand. If it doesn't, you have to repollinate it again. Oh, and here's a good example. I just found this. This was badly pollinated and you can see that it's discoloring on the top. It's not forming anymore. It's staying pretty much the same size. So this is a good indication that it wasn't pollinated. And eventually this tip will turn brown. This might grow a little bit more. It just It doesn't really grow. It fills up at water. The cells elongate and that's why it deforms and will look different maybe later on when you see it. But that's exactly what's happening to it. It's just got deformed and not pollinated well. So another amazing thing you can do with squash flowers is that they're fully edible from top to bottom, including what's inside at any point. Again, you wish to harvest them early in the morning. Uh, this way you can see if any bugs are on the inside and you can remove them uh, prior to closing up in the afternoon. But you can see here most of them are male flowers and these are what we harvest. I actually harvest these and sell them. I'll come in here and we'll cut them off and I sell this to a chef's kitchen for about 50 cents. That's the going market price wholesale. So I sell 24 of them in a case, and uh, 24 in a case, and I get about $12 for them. So on this plant here, uh, you can see that it's doing very nicely. There's actually three seeds in the ground, and so it's cost efficient for me to grow them very close together. They don't have any problems. And what's nice about it right here, if I just wish to pick the flowers and sell them, I can make 12 bucks uh, pretty much over the lifetime of the plant on this one specific area. The recipes are endless using these flowers. You can stuff them. Uh, I actually use uh, Greek yogurt and raspberries I put in there. And then I will fold this close like so and just twist the top and serve it for brunch in the morning as just an appetizer. We'll fill that up. And as so, and you'll just eat this as is with Greek yogurt in there and raspberries. It's delicious. And other recipes will put uh, goat cheese in there, or mozzarella cheese, and basil. Again, it's endless, and they'll deep fry these. And again, they're just delicious as is. And you can also cut this up in little pieces and add them to your salad if you don't wish to uh, go any type of cooking method or stuffing method. So this is my early morning harvest for my daily meal. I will eat the flowers within the next, say, 10 to 15 minutes with some stuffing in there and enjoy the squash later on in the day. Thanks. I want to thank you so very much for watching today's video and taking time out of the day to do so. And please, if you can, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It will help out my channel immensely. And until the next time, I thank you very much and enjoy gardening.